What is up, Game Dev Gangster? Now, I've been thinking, how can I spice things up on my channel? What is something new that I can publish that nobody has published before? And I came up with an idea, which is also a challenge for myself, to publish a video every single day for a specific period of time. And that is going to be 100 days. So starting from the this, this video right here, and the next 100 days, I'm going to publish a video every single day. And it is going to be a tutorial series where I create a game. I'm going to do Unreal Engine and Unity. And this is the first game in that series. So this right here is a Unity game and I'm going to just shut up a little bit and show you the game that we have. So it's a really cool platformer game with enemies, obstacles, collectible items and so on and so forth. As you can see the goal is to pick up all of these diamonds and reach here the exit door which is basically the end of the of the level. So if I hit the play button the first thing that we are going to hear is the BG sound as you can hear over here because you have ears, you can hear. I'm going to turn off the BG sound, it will obscure my talking because I want to show you other sound effects that we have. So over here, if I pump up the volume a little bit, we are going to hear the jump sound of the player. So if I try to jump, we will hear that. There you go. There you go. If we collect this item, we will hear that as well. There you go. These are the enemies. So this one here is the spider jumper. This one over here is a spike that will fall down. It will detect when we are below it and it will, you know, fall down. This right here is a spider who is spitting on us, basically attacking with a bullet. And this is a saw that is moving left and right. The goal is, as I said, to pick up all of these diamonds. And I'm going to do that right now. Try to reach the end level. Of course, I'm not dying because I turned it off. I will show you what will happen when I die as well. So going back over here. Let's try to avoid all of these obstacles, and there you go, yada, 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 come on, there you go, there you go, there you go. So the point is, as I said, and this is a pretty, you know, large game, and here it is, we reach the end of the level, when we exit over here, we won, and we can play again. Now, of course, let me just turn off the, you know, not killing me and so on and so forth. So if I go over here, I'm going to turn on the counting for the, for the time. Because here at the top left corner, we have the timer for the air and for the, for the time. And I'm going to select the player and uncheck the checkbox that will not allow the player to basically die. What, will, what happens here? Okay, again, selecting the player, unchecking the checkbox. There you go. So let me just clear the console. And if I hit the play button right now, pay attention to the top left corner. The air timer and the time timer are running out. So if they run out, we will die. We can replenish them by collecting the items over here for the time. But pay attention now when I die, when the timer runs out. So look at that. Just a few seconds more and... Game over. There we go. So also when we die or when we do whatever when we win the game will restart and if i get hit by some of these obstacles i also die and that is the point of the game so as i said this is the first game that we are going to create in this tutorial series for the next 100 days and if you guys like this format i'm going to publish even more because i'm pretty good at creating videos i can create like 20 videos in two days so that's 10 videos per why didn't i say 10 videos per day and 20 videos in two days anyways you get the point make sure that you like subscribe to support this cause because it's a lot of work to publish a video every single day that's really a lot of work and uh yeah after this one, Unreal Engine is on turn, so I will create the next game that I'm pub going to publish is going to be Unreal Engine. Uh, let me just shut up and there you go. Continue with watching, you know, the tutorial. I will see you when I see you. Okay, now my game dev gangsteronio. Now that we saw the game that we are going to create, let us create the game. Here I have a new project. It's a 2D project, so simply go in Unity Hub and create a 2D project. Over here in the scenes, I am quickly going to change this name to Gameplay because why not? I like it like that. I am weird, I know. So the next step is to import the assets. And here are the assets. Currently, we have the fonts and the sprites. I'm, cur I'm saying currently because at the time when I recorded the game, I didn't add the sound effects. I'm playing with the... You know, idea to add sound effects. You will probably see here the sounds folder as well. Simply select all of these and drag and drop them. Well, not in the scenes folder, but actually drag them here in the project.
And there you go, voila. And by the way, you can download these assets. Link will be in the description below, basically on my website, awesome2.com. Just go there, enter your email, and you will be redirected to download the assets. Now, if you never have used my website to download the assets, please, on the thank you page, when you sign up, you will see a video explaining how you will download all the assets. And in the email that I will send you automatically or the system that will send you, it will explain how to download the assets. So now moving forward here, we have the sprites and let's go here into the game sprites and this is where we have our player. So the first thing that we are going to do is prepare the player. And in order to prepare the player, we also need the blocks or the ground that he's going to land on. So I'm going to select the blocks and go here in the sprite inspector. And I'm going to change this from the sprite mode from single to multiple because this is a sprite sheet. If you pay attention at the bottom right corner of my Unity editor, it's a sprite sheet. And we have, you see, two of these grounds. So I am going to click here in the sprite editor now and I'm going to slice them up, you know, because why, why shouldn't I slice them up? There you go. This is going to be our ground one. So I'm going to call this bad boy ground one and this one is going to be our ground two and uh, it's that so hit apply button and there you go so now I can go here into the scene folder and drag my ground one there you go I can also attach a box collider on this one so there you go because I want it to be a solid object and I can do this. I can simply resize it, rescale it, move it here. And this is the ground where the player currently is going to stand on when we run the game because I don't want the player to fall down. If you don't want to wait every single day until I publish this whole tutorial series, you can access it right now in my Game Development Academy. Link is down below. You will access this tutorial series and 80 other courses where you can learn game development for Unity, Unreal Engine, and so on and so forth. Click the link down below and check it out. So let's go to the player who is also a sprite sheet and simply click on the player. And over here, again, in the inspector panel, we need to change the sprite mode from single to multiple. And I'm going to change that and hit apply. So now I can go here into the sprite editor and I can slice the player up, you know, I can S him up and this is the idle animation so I'm simply going to say idle or basically no I'm going to leave it as is the default name so slice it there you go this is player zero we know that the first one is the idle the next four frames are the walk and the last frame is the jump so I'm going to hit apply and there you go so let's take the player who looks like a bored child and what okay cancel no I don't want to save it as an animation but only as a single player because animations I'm going to create them on my own and voila this is the player so what I'm going to do to the player is I am going to add animator components so animator there you go I am also going to attach a box collider on this bad boy and we can zoom in a little bit on the player and I can click here the edit collider you see this button over here edit collider and I can edit the collider something like this and over here on his feet there you go I'm going to leave it as a solid because I'm also going to attach a rigid body. There you go. If you were confused to what I was saying, I need the ground for the player to stand because when I attach a rigid body on the player, he's going to fall down as you just saw because gravity is affecting him. That's how gravity works. If you try to walk over, I don't know, on a swinging, swimming pool and you have that plank, if you try to walk over, you fall down. That's a lesson that you just learned, a new lesson in Awesome Tudes. I almost said websites, YouTube channel. So yeah, now because I'm going to do this into series, this is, you know, part one, part two, and I'm going to upload this on a daily basis. I'm not going to leave you just like this for today. Instead, I'm going to go here inside of the project and create a new folder. And I'm going to call this one animations. And of course, here we are going to right click and create a new folder for the player animations, because I'm also going to create the animations for my player before, you know, I move away. And I'm not saying move away, like, you know, moving away in a different country. I'm, I'm still here on YouTube. So let's go here in the player animations and right click and create a animator controller. I'm going to call him player controller. And I am going to attach this on the player animator. Voila. 
And now going here into the animation tab, I am going to, you know, move the tab over here. I'm going to also close the asset store because the asset store is, you know, way 1920s. So I'm going to click here, create. And in the player animation, I'm going to store all of these animations. So we are going to have the idle. I'm also going to click here, create a new clip, and I am going to have the walk. And last but not least, I'm going to create a new clip and we are going to have the jump. So we are going to have the walk, idle and jump animation at the same time. Whoa, something you never saw before. So going here into the game sprites and for the player, for the idle, we have this one. This is the idle. We know that for the walk, we have frames one, two, three and four. And last but not least, for the jump, we have the last frame and that's that. Now, if I were to go here into the animator and if I select the player, if I go here, we will see his idle animation and that is, you know, everything is fine. But if I click here and set the walk as the default layer state, I'm going to change this a little bit. So going here into the walk, we are going to set here the sample rate at 20. This will make him, you see, he is walking a little bit slower, but still he is fast. So I'm going to click here on the walk and let's say 0.3. Well, 0.3 is also very slow. 0.6, maybe 0.5. Yep, I believe 0.5 is the right one. There you go. But of course, the default animation or the first one that is going to start when we run this game is going to be the idle so i'm going to right click on it and set as layer default state for those of you guys who are you know complete beginners and you're still following this tutorial even though i said it's not for you know complete complete beginners it's for people who already know the basics of unity in order to set the animation to be a default one, it needs to have this color yellow or orange, whatever color this is. And in order to do that, you right click on an animation and you then click set as layer default state. That's everything you need to do. Now, before I leave, the last step is to create two parameters. One is going to be a integer parameter, which is going to be a walk. So over here, I'm going to say int, and this one is going to be for the walk. Over here, I am going to create a Boolean one, and this one is going to be for the jump. And uh, voila, there you go. Let us also create the transition. So in order for us to move from one animation to another, we need to right click on the animation and create the transition. So we are going to be able to go from walk to idle and back from walk or from idle to walk and back from walk to idle. We are also going to be able to go from idle to jump and from jump to idle, from jump to walk and from walk back to, you know, jump. So if we go from walk to idle, the condition for that is going to be when the walk parameter is equal to zero. And we will see what does that mean. So when the walk parameter equals zero, we are going to go from walk to idle. In order to go from idle to walk, then the parameter walk needs to be greater than one. So over here, greater than one, there you go. Also, when we go from idle to jump, so from idle to jump, our jump is going to be, so this is from idle to jump, Hmm. So jump needs to be true over here. Let me go jump. There you go. True. This is when we go from idle to jump. And when you go back from jump to idle, then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to set the jump to be equal to false. And over here, I am going to set the walk to be equal to zero. So when walk is equal to zero, there you go. When walk is equal to zero, then we are going to go from jump to idle. And last but not least, when we go from, you know, walk to jump. So going back over here, we are going to set the jump to be equal to false, actually true. So jump is equal to true. And over here, when we go back from jump to walk, then we are going to have two parameters. Walk is going to be greater than one. And our jump parameter is going to be equal to false. There you go. There you go. And basically, that's it. So these are transitions or 
basically parameters that we are going to use in our code in order to trigger these transitions. And a transition means we are going from one thing to another. So we are transitioning from idle to walk, from walk to idle, from idle to jump and so on and so forth. So in the next video, we are going to start moving the player and we're going to see how we are going to, you know, fix all of this, how this is going to work. And I'm just going to stop because it's enough for this video. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, I love you. What else can I say? Far here from awesometutors.com and I will see you guys in the next video.